tender said hey guys how's it going how's it going nicole and then uh um tara lynn from facebook also said that a quality buyer wants the wholesaler to make a lot of money so I <laughs> yeah and i 100 percent agree with that and yeah and then uh trying to see who uh here we go shyla johnson row uh so many big players in detroit seems seems saturated uh does an individual wholesaler even wholesaler even have a chance before they jump on all the listings uh list with their robust resources you know um so i'll let you answer that since you well it's you know D detroit is a very residential area and is, and as you point out, there's players in town that we've been doing this a while. There's more houses to buy than we can buy. We can't buy them all. And right. Players don't always like everybody. They yep. they they do business with people they like and trust. So sometimes it's not about the price. And of course, the the buyers that you're nor the, the the sellers that you normally might be competing with are calling everybody in town anyway. Right. So even if you have an online presence and they Google who buys houses, they're going to find the top five or six guys. Yeah. Their websites and or we've sent them a postcard or we've texted them or cold called them or whatever. You know, so they usually have some stress. If there's a stress in their life, somebody's finding them. And then if they're at a at a crossroads themselves, then they're Google. So on on that with somebody who's just starting what would you recommend they do as far as a marketing channel and going with you know so everybody going after the same things what would you recommend i mean i have what i would recommend but i want to hear from you well right now what's working up best for us is just simply texting and you know there's platforms to do that with uh, lead sherpa batch leads yeah, there's there's a lot of you know other kind of uh services that do the texting you need to make sure you're compliant with the texting and the cold calling yep you need to make sure you're not selling something because if you're if you're texting and cold calling and you're selling something and they're on that do not call list that's a violation yeah you know? so there's certain parameters you need to do i think i think the most effective long term is direct mail because if you send them a postcard the postcard if they're if it's a probate or some other yeah thing where they're eventually going to sell their house that postcard laying on the table with the 20 other ones is still effective yes so right so they're going to pick it up sooner or later um i tell the story is that we stopped doing a lot of direct mail roughly around october of 19. we just kind of stopped we were doing a hundred thousand a month right up until then so that's a lot and that's expensive and right so there's you know that's a little bit different process when you do that much mail but even even and even till to even today we still get a call from that one of those postcards sitting on somebody's table the last royal oak house i did about three months ago came off a postcard that two other acquisition guys that i was using are no longer with me their photo was on that postcard <laughs> picked it up because she liked it then yeah and wrote a note on there and she just had some she had some stuff to work through in regards yep. to the estate right so she finally decided it was time to sell so she went through those cards and ours was on top and we put that deal together and uh, you know and then texting what I like about kind of the, the main thing that I do is a combination of those two I text that I get a list I text that list Mm -hmm. Well, I skip trace it first, right? So the, the, the you get a list of names, you then skip trace those, upload the those cell phone numbers into the system. You then t you know do a string of text to them. Mm -hmm. So one of three things is going to happen with the text. It's either going to get blocked, or they're going to tell you to go pound sand. Don't ever call me again. I call them angry birds. Is what they call those people. Yep. And or and or it's just uh, they'll reach back out and say, hey. You know, I want to sell my house, right? Yep. So the ones that get blocked, you take them, take that list and scrape it off, and then you send them a postcard because you 
because for some reason maybe that cell phone is not theirs anymore and right they'll ignore it or they'll block it right um so then when you send them the postcard then you're getting the real touch to them and then a lot of times by the time you do that because they get a bunch of texts from you and always be transparent on your text tell them who you are don't be say don't say just hey I, i'm looking for houses to buy call me and with no name no nothing they're not going to call you it's just right nothing. um so but put your name and stuff in there and then you send them the postcard if it if it uh because the verizon phone verizon system is very is very volatile against uh, those types of texts and the system will block it mm -hmm. you know and you can work around it with a system called twilio but twilio is expensive you have to pay a you pay you know like a half a half of a half a penny for each text and we do a thousand a day roughly costs us 20 bucks a day just to send out the text along with the platform right um and then it tracks it that's yeah what's important is to track what you're marketing so you can track the inbound to know what's working and what's not working so the biggest thing is is first off yes that's 100 percent. you know tracking what we're tracking what you do so you know what's working what's not working your cost per lead right you know um but so if somebody didn't have much marketing dollar too much marketing dollars or anything like that they're just starting off they want to get just get a proof of concept at the moment i think a driving for dollars list is the best way to go now what is a driving for dollars list is a you driving the neighborhood that you're going now sometimes you can do it virtually but we'll start around your neighborhood wherever you're at and you're taking down addresses that are in rundown condition they look distressed and now they may not come up on any mainstream list because they may be all caught up on on their bills and right. you know or anything like that but so that's one way i think to get started get the proof of concept ready and uh then you take that list skip trace it and in my opinion you can you can text or you can cold call i would recommend cold calling because that way you don't have to worry about a lot of that stuff but if you're not a some people are texters then do the texting you know um and i yeah. think that cold calling gets you a lot of experience of how to talk to a seller right yes because if you get one that's live and wants to sell then what do you do that's always used to joke about when i was first a realtor you know you cold call listening in listings right you want to sell your house you want to sell your house when i sell your house yes you need to know what to say when they say yes because the majority of them are going to say no right so if you're cold calling and have your i'm not going to call it a script but just have something in front of you that kind of gives you like a, an order of questions right right so and ask them because when they say yes what's the next thing you should ask them well tell me about your story you know tell me what's up right you don't have to be very specific. what's the matter you didn't pay your taxes you don't that's not a good thing to say you just right. hey, well tell me your story why are you looking this up well my grandmother died and you know the grandpa's living in there and we just put him into the nursing home and now the family i got two deadbeat brothers that doesn't want to you know whatever yeah. right so but of course while they're talking you need to be typing someone something over those notes to kind of i think at first when you're doing it go to every house you can get into no yep. qualifying them is always what you should do but going there just to get the experience of number one figuring out the value and understanding people's responses to you um and of course the gold the gold's in the follow-up right we all know that yeah the time they're not ready when you first touch them you got to keep calling them and calling them and then build that rapport so they call you back and yes. once and they're ready so that because if you're calling them because you saw long grass and tags in the window <laughs> there's a lot of other people doing the same thing so well yeah yes and i'm gonna say that yes and no yes there's other people doing the same thing if they're on a list if they're not on one of those um you're behind on your taxes you're okay, it's a white ticket or anything like that right if, you, if you're not if they're not on any of this and it, the house just looks run down you're going to be the only one contacting them 
yeah. you know so the only competition you have is other people doing driving for dollars and they make software to do that it's called deal machine right Correct. yep you can actually send them a postcard right from your car exactly <laughs> and of course that's cool. but that's a low entry cost too it's really not even that expensive right so first off i want to say hi to terry uh terry penny uh she said hi guy <laughs> so hey, hey. um and then uh nicole tender uh tedder said do we do uh creative finance deals currently okay 100 percent do creative financing <laughs> oh yeah yeah 100 percent yeah you can so, do uh lease options land contracts sell sub twos all kinds of things like that there's yep. all the different techniques to do that and of course that's a question you should ask them right you should yep. get into the habit if they say no to your cash hammer which most of the time they normally do right off yep. the get-go they never want to take your cash offer unless there's got to be a lot of stress for them to take it right off the get go and usually if they take your first offer that just means it's too much <laughs> because exactly so going down the road with the other is always the good thing to do yeah so um and then i'll answer this real quick this was kevin uh he asked me uh you know what does my jv business look like uh, on a day-to-day -day? kevin if you want to uh get a hold of me privately i'd be happy to talk with you about that my number is here my my email's floating around at the bottom um but for the most part you know i i work with other wholesalers i you know uh, basically you know we come to terms on a deal whether the assignment fee is 50 50 usually that's what it is um I, where i bring the buyer if i don't bring the buyer then we don't jv so there there's no sense of it you know if you bring the buyer and i you know all the stuff that i did basically means nothing to me so because i didn't do anything i didn't bring you a buyer i didn't add value you know so and a technique that I use for JV in a sense is uh, is a little more involved on my end, meaning especially new people when they find something that they don't know what to do. Yeah. Because if you give that to me and just get out of the way, I'll give you 25% and you've done nothing except give me the address. Exactly. You know, so and sometimes, you know, if you want to shadow me and or my acquisition guy at the appointment, that's fine. So you can learn. I'm all about the learning. Yep. So I love to, and I love to teach, meaning like I like to be able to read into you and give you some feedback on how you're doing it. Um, I can remember when you first started too, Randy. I remember yeah. meeting you a couple of years back. I remember that. Yeah, yeah hopefully I wasn't too uh, green on that. <laughs> no, it was good. I told you the other day, I thought that you, you know, you're, you have a humble spirit, you're learnable and coachable. And, that, and that's what I look for in anybody that reaches out to me is how coachable are you? Yeah. You know, it makes a difference in being coachable, right? Don't come to, I'm not saying I'm the best guy in town because I am not. Yep. You know, I'm in a handful of those, but if you come to me and ask me a question and I think that you're just digging for gold with me, I'm probably going to ignore you on the second round. It's exactly. Just, and smell it pretty quick. You know? and, and that's one thing that I actually offer for new people that, hey if you want to do where you bring me a lead i have no problem talking to the seller getting under contract going from there yeah. in that scenario if we do that then whether you bring the buyer or i bring the buyer we're fully jv yep. so um in that scenario i'm adding value because i've had value or we're jv whether you find the buyer or i find the buyer more than likely I'm going to be finding the buyer anyway. So, um, but I, 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 at least, you know, I do offer that for new people, uh, for anybody actually who wants to do that. I had one guy that, uh, I actually brought on here. He, he was new and he was bringing in leads, but he just did not know how to talk to people too well. So, um, you know, I would go on the appointment and I would get it under contract. I, uh, you know, I would talk to the seller, we'd get it under contract and then yep. it was actually ended up one, of my, one of my buyers ended up buying, uh, purchasing the property. So but we, sell that, sometimes sellers look at your age when you're young yeah, and you look like a kid and you are a kid, it's yep. difficult to overcome that age. I remember when I first started even just doing real estate in general, 
and I go on a listing appointment and the seller would say, well, how long have you been doing real estate? Uh, like two months. That was like the kiss of death. Like they're not going to hire you to list their house. Oh yeah. There's creative ways to like reframe that in a sense, but that's, you know, for me, I'm old enough and look like I've been weathered and probably can pay cash for your house, right? You show up when you're 18 years old, you know, JVN or bringing somebody with you is always a good thing to show that credibility, at least at the beginning, so you can kind of get your feet wet. Oh, 100%.